Hello YouTubers! This channel is all about RV living, traveling, and do-it-yourself projects. Please hit the subscribe button below. Hello everyone! I have been told that I should not say hi tubers because tubers are creators. However, I've been watching YouTube videos for over 10 years now and I consider myself a tuber. Oh well. Today we're talking solar panels. I will not discuss all panels such as the panels you get at Harbor Freight and such because that is such old technology. Those panels use chip technology which meant they used the corner chips cut from the quality panels during manufacturing. There is only one technology I would consider today and that is the mono. You can still purchase the poly but are not as efficient as the mono cells. The mono cells can produce as much as 80% of their rated power without direct sunlight, whereas the poly cannot. It may seem I'm promoting the Sun World panels. This is the panel I have on my RV. It has outperformed itself, so I would recommend it. We will take a look at two other panels later in the video. A solar panel is connected just like a battery. It has a positive connector and a negative connector. They can be configured in series called a string and the strings can be configured in parallel just like a battery. This is the data sheet on the uh, panel that I have on top of my RV. Um, this is a, the one I have is the 350XL Mono. The most important thing, maybe not the most important, but the first thing you want to look for on a data sheet on a panel when you're trying to decide what panel to buy is the module efficiency. These panels are rated at 17.54% efficiency. There are some panels out there that go up to as high as 22%, but you're going to pay premium for those panels. The Sun, uh, see what is the name of the company? Sun Power has got the highest efficiency panel, but a 100 watt panel costs about $3 a kilowatt. And I would recommend uh, when you're picking out a panel, to try to get your panels at less than a dollar a kilowatt. This panel here from Solar World, I mean, uh, Wholesale Solar, is where I bought my panels, my panel in 2014, and I bought it for $270. That's considerably less than a dollar a kilowatt. Uh, Wholesale Solar has gone way up on these panels. I have found this panel for $270, but you have to buy a minimum of 10. I have not searched for the best price. The one thing I want to tell you is when you're picking out panels, pick out the panel without cost in mind, the most efficient you can, and then whatever that model of panel is, search it for the best price. So the efficiency is the most important thing. These are 17.54%. Uh, which is high. The, the polys went up to around 15% and then the monos, they have been increasing the efficiency for those ever since. This panel has got a 25 year warranty, production warranty and use warranty. So it's got one of the best warranties in the uh, industry. This company has been in business for over 25 years. Uh, they are in good standing with, with the Better Business Bureau. Um, they don't have a lot of complaints uh, like many of the other panels will. One thing to keep in mind when you're, when you're purchasing panels, especially if, you, especially if you're getting them overseas, there's some fraud going on right now you need to be aware of is that since Trump has increased uh, subsidies coming in from China, uh, panels that are coming from China even though you pay the freight on them, once you've had them for a couple months, then you get this four or $500 bill for uh, the tax, the new tax for these panels coming in through customs. And they're not telling you about this fee up front. 
So I would recommend buying panels made in the United States. There's so many good quality panels and I got a list of them here I'll show you. But um, you don't have to worry about all those custom fees and everything for uh, panels coming in. The strange things about that is most of the sales, the actual sales, sales are either made in the Philippines or in Vietnam. And uh, so if you're getting panels from Philippines, they're not getting taxed the same way as, as the chips are getting sipped to China. The Chinas are putting them together in panels and then you're getting the, the uh, panels from China and you're having to pay those extra fees. But uh, Solar World Panasonic, which was just the Panasonic solar panel company was purchased by Tesla. And the Panasonic panels are now made in the, the uh, Gigawatt factory too, up in Buffalo, New York. And uh, if I were to buy some panels, I probably would purchase the Panasonic panel now because uh, of the efficiency. They're up to around 19% efficient. However, uh, they haven't been produced long enough to really know how well they're going to do. They have a great warranty. Panasonic has always had a, a great warranty. But since uh, Tesla has taken over the manufacturing and their new plant there in the Buffalo, uh, I don't know uh, the quality of those panels. I've never bought one, so I don't know anything about it. The other panel that you might consider is the SunPower. They've got the record in efficiency. They've got panels that go up to 25%. But again, uh, you're going to pay premium for, for those panels. And you only can purchase those through certain retailers. Uh, specifically, the retailer that uh, Sun City that, that Tesla bought that has this, the Solar Edge and sells his power wall and all that mess. Uh, and typically you have to buy a grid system to purchase uh, the power wall and uh, um, to buy their products. So it's, it's very hard to get a hold of those products. So the other thing that you want to pay particular attention to is the open circuit voltage. This is the voltage that you will calculate when putting these uh, panels in strings and in parallel. So on this panel, the open circuit voltage for the 50 watt, 350 watt panel is 47.3 volts. Most charge controllers, quality charge controllers, controllers such as the Morningstar and a few others, they're going to have an, uh, a maximum voltage that they can accept into the charge controller. And typically that's 150 volts. So uh, if you're building a 12 volt system, you're limited to only uh, 400 watts of panels and that's just one of these panels into that charge controller. The same charge controller can handle in 24 volt mode 800 watts of panels and a 48 in that same charge controller in a 48 volt mode will accept up to 1600 watts of uh, panels. So you can see real quick why paying an extra $7,500 for a charge controller, uh, a quality charge controller, and running it at 48 volts rather than 12 volts, you can put a lot of panels on that one charge controller you can't do on a 12 volt system. So if you had this panel on a 48 volt system, you could put three of these in a string, which would be right close, right under 150 volts, and you're limited to 1600 watts. So that is 30 amps at 150 volts. So you could put 30 amps worth of uh, power in from your solar panels. So you could put three strings of uh, 150 volts. Uh, and the other important factor in this data sheet is the short circuit current, which is 9.82 amps. So if you have three in, in series, that's a approximately uh, 147 volts, which is under the maximum you can have. And you could have 
three strings in parallel so you would have nine, a total of nine panels and you would come in with power of right around 150 volts just under 30 amps so that's how you figure um, your uh, charge controller but you need to know these numbers before you go look at a charge controller the Outback charge controllers are the other charge controllers I recommend and I have used them and they're fantastic they're a little bit more pricey than the Morningstar but if you're building a 48 volt system and uh, you're trying to get the maximum number of panels on a charge controller Outback makes a charge controller that still maxes out at 150 volts but it can accept up to 60 amps uh, so you can put considerably more panels on that one charge controller so these are the three things that you're looking for in a, uh, on a data sheet. You want to know the open circuit voltage so you can figure your voltage when you start putting these in series. And you need to know the amps so when you put those, video, those panels that are in series in parallel, of course, then you have to start adding up the amperage. And uh, these are very important numbers to do that. Now this is the Panasonic panel, panel I was referring to. One other note before we get looking at this data sheet is that the panels will come in three different sizes. I thought only two, they used to, you'd get 60 cell panels. And of course the panel I have is a 72 cell panel. Well, Tesla does things different. This panel is actually a 96 cell panel. <clears throat> But I like the, the form factor of this panel actually better than my panel. It's a little bit wider than my panel, but not as long. I was limited on my RV, the Class B, as a narrower roof, so I couldn't put the panel sideways. I had to put it long ways, and I only could get one panel. This panel, you'll see here in a minute, the size of it, uh, I could have put two of these 325s on my RV. Uh, very easily um, one thing to note on these panels that Tesla is, is building these panels are actually made for off-grid systems and uh, their uh, solar edge systems that are 400 volts they do not run 48 volts in their systems they run 400 volt the, the Tesla car battery is actually a 400 volt battery and uh, all your commercial and um, big uh, solar farms are running at 400 volts. It's just a lot more efficient and it's actually cheaper. So if I was starting without purchasing anything and I was planning my new off-grid solar system for home, this would be definitely the panel I select because the open circuit voltage on this one is 69.7. You could only get two of these panels in series to stay under the 150 volt, but the amperage is only six amps. So you could run quite a few more of these in parallel, these series in parallel. So you'd have two strings made up of two panels and then those strings in parallel to get up to your 30 amps. So these are at 69.7, but you put these in series the way these are designed is to go into a 400 volt system and you put a ton of these in series and in parallel and you reduce your amperage and your cable size tremendously when you're putting a bunch of panels up on top of a business roof or on your your house roof and uh, it just makes them so much more efficiently the form factor and the appearance of these are much nicer. They're not as obvious on top of the roof. That's the reason Tesla makes them. He also makes roofing materials that are solar as well as I'm sure you know. I mean, he makes tiles, he makes all kinds of roofing materials that have solar built into the roofing uh, materials themselves. And this is uh, the rest of the data sheet what's important here what I want to show you is the efficiency on this panel the module efficiency here is at 19.4 percent or to get to 33 30 watt it's 19.7 uh, percent almost two percent higher 
than uh, your other painted panel panels. I was so impressed with this Panasonic panel that I did a search for the best price on it and the best price I could come up with uh, was from Solar Biz and uh, it was $329. So that is for the for the money that is really close to a dollar a watt and uh, if I buy another panel this is probably be the one that I would purchase. It's only 41 pounds and uh, 325 watts I'd probably buy the 330 watt and I don't I couldn't find one of those for price everything said call for pricing so that's the best price I could find on this panel well this video has gotten well over my 10 minute limit but oh well uh, last but not least I wanted to give you a list of uh, US panel manufacturers all these manufacturers uh, I have used Sunvia uh, out of Georgia before, and um, that's the only one I recognize. Of course, uh, I've got Solar World, but this Tesla panel uh, looks very, very good. I sure would like to get my hands on one of those. So we're going to wrap this up. I uh, sure thank you for visiting uh, the RB Powerwall channel, and uh, please. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and uh, if you like the video hit the like button if you didn't please tell me what I could do better to make it so you'd like it till next time check you later